I'm going to read um, uh, Luci from Lucinella by Laurie Siegel today. Um, just for context, it is uh, about a bunch of writers at a writer's colony. Um, oh, also, this book was uh, given or lent to me uh, by a friend a couple summers ago. Um, I'm going to read the first three, three sentences and then skip ahead and, and uh, read about two pages. Lucinella is my name. I wear glasses. It's my first visit here, and I'm in love with all five poets. Four men, one woman, and an obese dog called Winifred. Skipping ahead. I myself am a younger poet, 20-ish going on 40. You haven't heard of me as yet. Lucinella is the name. In town, I tend to be introverted, the, int the introverted intellectual type. But here I'm turning into a Russian novel. I'm in love with all of you, I tell the poets. Poets understand this and go on eating their breakfasts. On my left, that's Myers, putting brown sugar on his porridge. You've read his latest, which won the Pulitzer, the Pulitzer five years ago, all about his fear that he's going crazy. Across from us sits Better Wheatland, the English critic. You see his name a lot in the New York Review of Books. He's pouring coffee into Pavlovenka's teacup. Pavlovenka giggles. You haven't heard of her and probably won't. She's 40, five, put, five foot four by four, and a genuine Russian. Her passionate and happy eyes embrace us all. I can't take too much of Pavlovenka, but I do like her, and I really like Better Wheatling. That's the English critic. Try to tell my poets apart. I know how hard it is. Better Wheatling's wit is oblique and his dimensions are commodious. I like bulk, and I like his being English. Myers I love. His face is white, his blue eyes are rimmed with pink, his great blonde mustache droops. Myers tells wonderful, funny stories. Also, I like his Pulitzer. I'm telling him my problem. Take this great, dark-paneled, sun-filled dining room, I say, in which we sit on 19th century English chairs carved in imitation of medieval settles with mild-faced, short-waisted warriors in high relief, poking their spears and sabers into our backs or this great silver bowl full of roses in the center of the table. Even when we don't focus on our physical surroundings, they seep into our awareness. How can they seep into my poem, and without sneaking? I abhor tricks. Because I know this has no relevance to Meyer's writing, I ask what he is working on. He says on a longer line, with alternate end stops, that's got him tied in knots. He says, didn't Retke used to come to Yado? Winterneat tells us about the time he drove Retke up from the sanatorium. On the way, he says, Retke spoke only once, to ask who else was staying. People frightened him, but it was late in the season, just about this time of year. The summer crowd had gone. It was a small, quiet bunch. Winterneat says he recalls the morning he and Retke were walking behind the vegetable gardens and discovered the root cellar. Root cellar. I'm going to write a poem called Euphoria in the Root Cellar, all about some poets who visit a root cellar in a Retke poem. What is a root cellar? I ask Myers. Myers is staring at Winterneat, who's saying, Retke used to work well at Yado, but some have come up and promptly gone to pieces. Who? What happened? I ask. I love stories. But J.D. Winter Winterneat has finished breakfast. He says he'll tell me on our walk tomorrow morning. He leaves. Bert, the red-haired poet from New Jersey, no, I never heard of him either before this, comes late to breakfast and, I, and says moodily, morning all. I never quite believe in red-haired men, but Bert I like. We've been having lunch together at noon on the terrace. Day after day, the weather has been spectacular. The contour of every nearest leaf and farthest range of mountain is equally sharp. Winifred sinks his teeth into a mole's skull and shakes. The crisp snap of vertebra carries clear across the lake. The stone bench is hot to the touch. An old-fashioned scent of late roses weighs upon the air like the sentimental virtues that willed this property to the pursuit of art. Um, the V of virtues, the P of property, and the A of art are all capitalized. 